Hello and welcome folks to a new video. In this video we're going to be looking at this little clock you see in front of you. It's a simple design that uses a stepper motor, an Arduino and some 3D printed parts. In terms of being a clock, these parts are a strange combinations of being way overkill and also not being very well fit for purpose. Despite all of this, the clock actually works pretty well. Anyway, let's jump straight in and see how it all works. Okay, so this is our setup for our motor, our controller, and our little driver board. Um, so previously I've shown motor drivers, stepper motor drivers. Usually I use a DRV 8825 driver. It's a little bit overkill for this project, and we are only driving this dinky little stepper motor. Um, so this way more basic little one down here uh, is actually going to work out really well for this project. So. Uh, I'm going to talk about it because it's a little bit different to what I've used, and also it's kind of cool how it works uh, if you've never seen one before. So, yeah, let's have a look at that. Um, so I suppose first thing to say about these really is that this little driver board, uh, which I can show you here, is it's not really like a stepper driver. I mean, it is. It's what it's made for. It's what it does. But the little chip that's on it is actually just a really generic component. Uh, it's a ULM2004 which is a Darlington transistor array. So if you've never heard of a Darlington transistor array before, don't worry about that. Um, I'll show a picture of the screen here somewhere, what a Darlington transistor pair looks like. Essentially, this is just a chip that has like eight of those baked into it or seven of them baked into it. And you can use these to drive motors. So effectively, what, they, what this does is it takes the very low current pulses from a stepper motor. So we've got four wires that come into this guy. And uh, we've got a four wire little stepper motor here. So two phases. Uh, and it takes those um, takes those low, little low current, high low pulses. And here, this little board, you connect it directly to your power supply. And the Darlington transistor array allows you to drive a much more high current uh, through each of the phases of this motor, which it needs to drive itself. Um, and that's really it. It's pretty simple. Now, the difference with this guy and the DRV8825 drivers is this doesn't have any logic at all. So it's just a very dumb kind of power circuit. It doesn't actually do have any of the smarts in it. So that's why our Arduino is here. It has to do all the smarts. Whereas usually with a DRV8825, you can just give, you know, it has one pin, which is like the step pin, and it'll do a step every time you hit it. This is a little bit different. You have to write your code slightly differently to make this thing work. So you have to actually understand how the stepper motor works. It's not crazy complicated. There's basically, so I said it was a four wire motor. It's actually not, it's a five wire. Um, so it has one wire that's connected to your power supply, which is the common. And then it has four phase wires, which go into the windings inside here. So effectively you've got one high signal and then four other um, signals that are in this the order in which you pulse them will make the motor step here. So I'm running this motor super, super slowly so that I can show you this. So it's barely moving. It is moving, but just barely. And what you can see here is these little driver boards because they're literally made for this purpose. They've got four LEDs on them here. And the order that those LEDs are pulsing at is the order that the phase windings are being energized through the Darlington transistor array to then drive the whole thing. Um, so you might be wondering, why do I need this Darlington transistor array if I just send pulses to the motor? That is because the current required to drive um, the phases on this is much more, say, than you can draw uh, safely from uh, your Arduino directly. So it wouldn't work properly if you did it without the Darlington transistor array. So with the Darlington transistor array, we have a low current comes in. So Darlington transistor, it's a little bit complicated. It's kind of like a current amplifier. You've got one input, which is on the base, effectively. So once you turn on that with a very low amount of current, you have a much higher amount of current that can go between the collector and the emitter. And that's what then is wired into each of the phases of the motor, which allows us to draw enough current. Now, it doesn't draw a huge amount of current, uh, this little motor, because it's only a teeny little thing, um, but it's still more than you would necessarily want to drive out of um, your microcontroller, especially if you were driving multiples of them. So we're obviously just gonna be driving one because we only need one for our little basic clock that we're gonna make. Um, but yeah, that's it. 
So yeah, that's really it. It's pretty simple. Um, one thing you that I didn't talk about. Um, so usually you can do things like micro stepping with those fancy drivers. You can do micro stepping with one of these as well. You just have to know what the order of the pulses is. So that's the other thing I didn't mention. I said that these are you know pulsing in a particular order, which makes it work. You have to know that, and you have to know that by knowing which phase windings are which. Um, I'll show you the code somewhere on the screen here. You'll see um, where I have set up what my step sequence basically is, which is this is a known sequence. You could look it up for your individual motor. Um, so this is the full step sequence that's running here. So this is running in full step mode right now. You can change that. You can add in kind of intermediary steps so the sequence becomes longer and then you'll be doing micro stepping. So you can do like half stepping with this little motor as well, which is probably what I will end up using for the clock to get me a little bit finer resolution um, as it sweeps. But yeah, that's basically, that's basically it. That's uh, how it works. Um, one other thing to note is that you'll see here that these you know, pulses are coming out on with the LEDs about every, I think it's every hundredth of a second or so. Oh, I've done something there. Oh, there we go. Um, and basically that sets how fast the motor will spin. So how quickly you pulse the, how quickly you pulse each of those pins will tell you how fast the motor spins, but there is also a limit. You can only pulse it so fast. I think this motor max frequency it'll accept is like a hundred hertz or something like that, a hundred times a second. So that's pretty quick, but, um, there's obviously a limitation with how fast this little motor can go. Not not a hugely powerful little thing, but perfect for this use case. So yeah, that's about it um, for the wiring and stuff. And this is basically all the wiring that I need to do this. I have my Arduino, which will have the code on it to track the time and then know how many times that this guy should revolve and what speed it should do it at. This little driver board with the power supply connected to it handles all the rest of the power requirements. So that's pretty much it. The rest of this project is basically just 3D printing and assembling stuff. So that's kind of nice and fun. Um, but yeah, if you hadn't seen this before, I hope that kind of makes sense. Uh, definitely look these up. Look up how tar Darlington transistors work and look up how stepper motors work and convince yourself of how they marry together. So this is just a little bit about building out the electronics for this project. Very similar to a lot of uh, projects I've done before. Basically used a piece of proto board and you know, soldered a bunch of components to it. Um, I don't really like soldering microcontrollers directly onto these, so put in some header pins, microcontroller to sit into. Uh, and then for the little driver module, because it wasn't just a chip, I just kind of hot glued it onto the board really in the end. Um, with the first part here, um, what we're doing is we're just soldering on the power connection. Um, I was debating how to power this project because there's you know, a lot of different ways I could do this. Um, but when I considered the low power nature of the microcontroller and the actual stepper itself, um, I figured that I wasn't actually going to need anything more than, you know, standard five volts that can be um, supplied by um, a USB power supply. And indeed, that's how I decided that I wanted to power this thing in the end is basically just be any USB standard USB five volt power supply that you can find uh, will power this. So. Uh, that's what we're doing here. We're just soldering on a little um, a micro USB uh, socket so that I can power the whole thing. As I said, there's not a lot new here uh, compared to how I've uh, put together electronics for my previous project. So if you've watched my channel for a while, uh, this won't be anything new for you. So I'm not going to say anything here. Uh, I'm just going to leave you with a little bit of uh, time-lapse soldering ASMR for you guys to enjoy.
So a little bit of wiring later, a little bit of soldering, a little bit of hot glue, and we have our finished electronics. It all went together very smoothly. There's a couple of little uh, bits that uh, where there was some dodgy connections, some of the wiring not perfect, but tiny touch with soldering iron uh, in most cases was able to solve that. Um, in any case, this is our finished electronics all done and working, and this is more or less the bones of the entire clock finished. Uh, barring the mechanical components that will make it an actual readable mechanical clock. Um, so that's what we're going to look at next, is the design and how we 3D printed uh, the face and the hand for the clock. So with all the electronics done, it's time to move on to the mechanical design. Um, for this, I started out with uh, a basic model of the face of the motor, including the uh, boss and the shaft for it. Um, that's because pretty much all of the critical dimensions on this entire thing are based around the little motor that's driving it. Um, so you need to get the mounting holes right to mount onto the face plate. And then also the shaft and its little uh, detents on the side are important to make sure that the hand would be able to slot straight on. Um, I suppose I should also mention at this point uh, what the actual design is going to be. It's uh, very simple. Um, all it is is a single face and a single hand. So it's just two parts that need to uh, connect together with the motor uh, to drive the whole thing. So this is going to be just a single hour hand type clock. Um, so it's basically going to be like a single slowly sweeping hour hand. Um, there's also no numbers involved in it. So it's just little uh, like lozenges that mark the hours. Uh, and then you sort of have to infer the time based on where that hour hand is in between uh, any of the two marks. Um, so kind of deliberately, I'm not making it super precise and super accurate because it isn't. The motor is has a little bit of backlash on it, so it tends to be a little bit floppy. Um, and also, the, I don't necessarily trust that the code uh, that's running is going to keep it uh, you know, running in perfect time. Um, so uh, this really basic uh, approach. Um, I think it looks kind of cool, um, and it's very simple to design. Like I said, two parts, printing time, not that much either. Um, so yeah, that's about it really for the mechanical design. Very, very simple. Um, and yeah, quite enjoyable to do. I actually modeled this entire thing minus the motor model that I made uh, in one sitting. Uh, it took me about 20 minutes, and that's what you've just been watching. It's just a sped up version of me actually effectively doing it live. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, I find this uh, sped up CAD um, oddly soothing. So yeah, well, let's just uh, sit back and watch it for a while. So after some obligatory uh, 3D printing action shots, we're finished. We have our finished thing. Uh, it's all assembled, uh, with the hands in, the motor mounted, um, and the clock standing in its own little base. Um, unfortunately now, the tricky part is we need to 
first of all, write the code for the clock, which I did. Not you know, it's not crazy complicated. Um, it's a little bit rough. It kind of it's sort of an approximation for how a clock should work. Um, but the difficult part about the way this clock works is because it's just a smooth sweeping hour hand. Um, it's kind of hard to see if it's uh, losing time or anything like that or if it's actually accurate um so for my first tests i coded it up plugged it in and i set up a really basic time lapse to film it for a couple of hours to see does it actually do anything um so this is what you're seeing now and basically this is just about two hours worth of a time lapse um to see uh if it kept time and it actually did a reasonably good job so since then it's been sitting on my desk uh uh ever since and i've been you know keeping an eye on it to see if it's keeping time and as of right now it's reasonably good at keeping time uh, i imagine that we will have to stop it and move the hand every so often to make sure it stays in time but um you know it's not a critical piece of time equipment it's just something fun to look at um and yeah so i'm not too worried about that so there we have it folks that is the end of this project I hope you guys enjoyed following along with it uh, as much as I enjoyed building it. Um, if you're interested, there is a link in the description to my website where you'll find all of the CAD and the code if you'd like to make this yourself. You'll also find a link to my Patreon if you'd like to help support the channel. Um, and as always, folks, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.